How's it going guys? I wanted to make a video on a really cool library on Sketchfab. Um, a lot of my videos have been brought to you by Sketchfab. This is not a sponsorship. This is just something I think is really, really cool. So this is uh, about 666 models, CC0, meaning you can use it in your professional work or personal work, no need for crediting. And this is a collection of public domain cultural heritage 3D models. So you can go in and get these and they all come with textures. They're all really, really good. What I'm gonna show you guys today is how I created this render with those models. So I got this model, this model, and really, really cool, I'm gonna show you a video from Ian Hubert. So this is a video from Ian Hubert actually using these public domain textures and models and things like that. And it's really incredible. This is one of the models, just it's huge and it's really cool. And he, he actually turned me on to this whole collection. Again, crazy stuff coming from Ian on this, on these uh, public domain textures and textures and models and all that stuff. And there's so many, there's 666. So this is one of the models I used. And as I was scrolling, you can just go in, like you, you can use this for an environment. You can use this, this, all this stuff is free for you to use in your environment building. So I'm gonna take some of these models from here, show you how to import them, show you how to use them, and I'm gonna make a quick little environment in this. So this is the environment I made with the models. You can actually grab this project file on Patreon for all three tiers. If you don't know about my Patreon, you get exclusive tutorials, weekly project files from my personal work, studies and projects. You get monthly procedural materials. So we have so far, I've released 50 materials over the past five months and I'm just about to drop the tile pack. So you can get all that stuff on Patreon, as well as I talk about my client work and different things like that on tier three. So if you wanna check out that, that's in the description, but let's get into just my process and how I created this. So I have bookmarked those models. So I'm gonna pull up this one, which is the big grass thing. So here it is, you can actually preview the different models. So I liked this one. I you know, I saw it and I thought, okay, I can probably do something really cool with this. So I went down here and I just downloaded the OBJ origin original format file. So I just made a fol folder called glass. I'm gonna pull in that and then extract the, the files and I go into source and extract that file. And then now there's all my stuff, the model, the object file, the, uh, the material file. And I'm also going to go ahead and pull up the pod. So I'm gonna pull up this guy right here really, really cool model. I thought, okay, there's probably a lot of cool things in, and there's a lot of details in it too. So we're gonna do the same thing. Download the original, make another pro, I mean, uh, you know, another folder, call it pod, pod two, do that, download that, extract everything. And we're gonna head on over to Blender to import those. All right, so I'm gonna pop on over here to Blender, file, import, and we're gonna do the OBJ. So I'm gonna find the folder. So I'm gonna find grass right here go to source and get the object file. So that's gonna take a second to import. All right, so now I have my object here. If I hop on over to Eevee just to make sure that the texture did, sometimes these textures will not import automatically and all you'll need to do is just say it didn't, you know, it didn't import the way I want it to. So what, what I'll do is I'll just delete this. And if you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, comes with default, I'm just gonna hit Control T and it gives me just this simple texture setup. I'm gonna open, go to the desktop, find grass, find the, uh, let me go back here, find the textures, click that, and it'll map it right there for you just the way it needs to be. So that's a little hack for you, and then you can just go ahead and say, I wanna have a little bit of bumping going on, so BUM, we'll get a bump, uh, bump uh, node, and then we'll plug the color into the bump height, and then we'll just get a little bit of detail, just really quick, and I'll just bring that down just so that the light can interact with it a little bit better. So now we have a great, almost realistic texture here that we can view in Eevee. Now let's go ahead and import the pod. So let's go ahead. So I'm going to go to OBJ, go to my desktop, pod, source, and then I'm just gonna hit all of those, import them, and it'll take a second. All right, so there's the pod. It imported extremely large, but that's simple to fix there. Just scale it down. And uh, he's finished, and we do have great textures, great fun stuff. And once we use the cycles, the uh, cycles engine, it's going to look even better. It looks okay in Eevee. Uh, image textures always pretty much look better than procedural textures in Eevee. So you can do this stuff in Eevee, and you get some amazing stuff. All right, so what I'm going to do, all right, so the pod is here. I'm just going to bring in a regular primitive to make sure everything's scaled correctly. So pod's a little bit big. So bring them down to there. 
delete the cube. And then I'm gonna bring my ground plane, I'm gonna hit tab so that I can fix that origin point there. So right, right there's fine, just general location. So right now, I think I'm gonna use this direction right here. I don't like its slantedness. So I'm just going to try to even it out and then get my camera going. So I'm gonna get a camera just like this, do that. Okay, now we have that. I'm gonna go and just position my pod to be right here. Actually a little bit bigger, I'm gonna rotate him. I have the whole, the, the pod is about three different pieces and I parented them to an empty, uh, just, so, just for reference here. And then that's there. This is really cool. Let's go ahead and start lighting it. So I'm gonna go here to the cycles engine and I'm gonna press rendered. Obviously, you're not gonna see anything because there's no light affecting the scene. So I'm gonna go to the world and get in a sky texture, just like that. And then I'm gonna bring the strength to about five and then give it more of a sunset. So now we have this really cool sunset looking if you just rotate. It's one of my favorite things Blender offers, this really quick lighting texture stuff. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit of conceptual with this. And the idea is we have this you know, this random pod sitting here. I wanna add something that's a little bit, you know, not normal. All this stuff is very dirty, very um, organic. So I'm gonna add something that's perfect. And in this case, I'm gonna get a perfectly white reflective material and cover it almost look like it's under like a garage or something. So that's kind of the concept. So I'm gonna get a cube, move it to about here, and then I'm gonna scale it up. And what I'm gonna do here is delete these front faces. X faces. Now we have this stuff going on and I'm going to rotate them a little bit to face the camera. I want it to be symmetrical in that way. And then I'm going to scale it out like that. So I like how that looks. Let's go ahead and give it a solidify. First I want it to, okay, let's get it a solidify, bring the thickness in something. So now we have this, let's check out the render. So now it's here. I wanna add some lights in here. So I'm gonna quickly get in a uh, cylinder, go to wireframe view, make it really skinny, and then we'll go back to solid. We will uh, scale it up, hit G, and just bring him right about there. It doesn't need to be very exact, and then scale it up. Go to the rendered view, click on that cylinder, and we're gonna add in an emission to give it a really cool light. So we'll give it a strength of 100, and now we have this lighting the scene, and then we'll just duplicate the cylinder and bring it directly to the other side, just like this. So now we have a really cool area lighting this, so we get a really cool focal point. Now I'm gonna go back to that perfect material I want, so I'm just gonna give it a pure white and then no roughness. And now we have this really cool effect happening. And it's this weird, perfectly white, perfectly reflective object in this strange environment. And that's what really makes this kind of interesting to look at. Last thing I'm gonna do is add a little bit more interest. And what I'm gonna do is add a light into the scene. So I'm gonna bring a light right in here. And then I'm going to take my uh, model here and rotate a little bit. I don't wanna actually see the light. We'll go to rendered view and I'm gonna make it a bit of an orangey red. So right about there, give it a power of like 300 so you can see what's going on. And now it gives you like a little interest, like wow, what's going on in there? Something like that really makes you kind of stare at the image. So there you go, that's my render. And the cool thing about this is none of this is subject to copyright and you're done. You can use this professional work, whatever you want. It's really cool, 666 models, textures, bunch of cool stuff going on in there, all available to you on Sketchfab for free. I'll link it. Thank you guys for watching.